John chapter 9, 18. When Jesus had spoken these words, his prayer, John 17, he went forth with his disciples over the brook Cedron, or Kidron, where it was a garden into the which he entered and his disciples. Uh, Cedron, I got a note here, 2 Samuel 15, 23. And Judas also, which betrayed him, knew the place. For Jesus oftentimes resorted thither with his disciples. So Jesus is not running and hiding. Jesus knows. The disciples don't. Jesus knows that this is the hour he's been betrayed. And he goes about his business just as any other day. Daniel knew the proclamation, the law was signed. He goes in his room, closes his doors, opens the window, and prays. Daniel's the type of Jesus. They're both going to pray. They're both taken captive. You ought to read Daniel with the life of Jesus Christ and just see how, when he's in that lion's den, man, that is so much like that, that tomb that Jesus is sealed in. For Jesus oftentimes resorted thither with his disciples. So this is the place that Judas knew about. This is the place that Jesus went. This would be one of those prayer closets of Jesus. So this is nothing new to disciples. So when you find Peter, James, and John falling asleep, we're here again. They're not expecting this would be the last prayer meeting they would have with Jesus. They're not expecting that within the next 24 hours, their life is going to change dramatically. It's just another prayer meeting. Judas then having uh, Judas, which also betrayed him, knew the place. Judas then having received a band of men, and I'm told one tenth of a legion, Judas brings about two hundred soldiers with him, according to the numbers. Did they know who Jesus was? Absolutely. Why would they bring so so many men? Peter, James, John, Andrew, fishermen. Before the night is through, Peter is going to take his sword and he's going to play some sword play. These disciples, Judas knows, they are a rough band of men. You're going to need some soldiers. And about 200 men and officers from the chief priests and Pharisees. So the chief priests and Pharisees bring their military. Their officers, they're in charge with Judas. Could be to circle the whole garden too. Because yep. he had slipped away so many times. Yeah, they don't want him to get away. But this the fact is there's so many men here. And it would be half of David's four hundred. Coming through with lanterns. It's the middle of the night. There's no street lights. There's no headlights. There's no halogen bulbs. And torches. And weapons. Jesus was no wimp. Judas says, you better get you better get some soldiers. You better get some weapons. And the main eyes are upon Jesus, but you know, Bobby's in the crowd there. You know, one of them's Peter. You gotta watch out for him. Yeah, I don't know. I don't even know what that boy is going to do. But you better watch out for him. I wouldn't think Matthew was a too much of a wimp either. Jesus, therefore, knowing all things that should come upon him, he knew what's going to happen. He knows the events before they're going to happen. He knows these three guys are going to fall asleep. He knows Judas is on his way. He knows he's going to be spitted and buffeted and. This is going to be the worst 24 hours ever. And men will say, oh, this is hell on earth. No, Jesus will end up in hell. Jesus, therefore, knowing all things that should come, come upon him, the suffering and the death, went forth and said unto them, whom seek ye? He walks right up to Judas, walks right up to the men. Hi, guys. What are you looking for? 
With the reception of these soldiers, Jesus comes forth. They answer him, Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus says unto him, I am he. And Judas also, which betrayed him, stood with them. And as soon as he had said unto them, I am he, they went backward and fell to the ground. That's the power of the word of God. Over 200 men won. I mean, 200, if it's 201, Judas went over backward. Mr. Pentecostals, you don't fall over backward. You fall over like a dead fish flopping out of a boat. And if you are going to fall down and be slain in the spirit, these men are guilty of going against God's son with no good intentions. These men are going to grab Jesus and bring him to the priest so they can have their fun with him. And they fall over backwards. Go ahead. Be a church and imitate a bunch of lost men. Go ahead. You're not fooling God. And when I see your videos, I think you look like an idiot. I've seen this played out in videos in front of me. All I got to say is when you do something like that in these churches, man, it's got to hurt in the morning. They asked, then asked he them again, Who's, whom seek ye? They said, Jesus of Nazareth. Oh, they got up. <laughs> or said it more timidly, Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus answered, I have told you, I am he. If therefore ye seek me, let these go their way. He's talking to the disciples. Jesus is now the authority. He's in charge. He's got the, he's got the whole, wait, here's, I said 200 men in, in their leaders. Get right. In their officers. I want to get the word right. They're coming up. They got their weapons. They got the torches. They, I mean, it, it, it's a mob scene. And now the one they're after, the, the, the criminal, if I can say that, even though he's not guilty of anything, innocent, is now in charge. And has taken control of the scene. That the saying might be fulfilled which he spake. Of them which thou gavest me have I lost none. The disciples are going to take off. Because listen. If the chief priest can get a hold of these disciples. They would batter them even worse than what they've done to Jesus. If they could get a hold of them. There would be. A little, little riffing ticket. There would be 14 crosses that. Don't you think that's not true? Do you, don't you know that in Book of Acts they are angry at, at Peter and is he James or John? I have to look. We'll, we'll be coming to the Book of Acts pretty soon. Don't you know they are angry? They're already trying to kill him. They took the axe to John's uh, to James' neck. They crucified Peter upside down according to the scriptures. You go to Fox's Book of Mars, you read about those those 12 disciples I'm talking about with Paul. All but John, you check out how, how they were killed. John was put into boiling liquid and then set in the island Patmos. They're not happy with these 12 men. I'm not talking about Judas. They say in the Book of Acts, these men have turned the world upside down. That's where the expression comes from. I have told you, I am he, therefore ye seek the, that the saying might be fulfilled which he spake of them which I, which thou, God, gaveth me, I have lost none. Peter were gone down fighting. He then said, then Simon Peter had a sword, drew it. I thought he was sleepy. I thought he was sleeping. And smote the high priest's servant and cut off his right ear. You know, look at that. When's Jesus born? I don't know. What ear did Simon cut off? The right ear. There's more information about this guy's ear than there was. Well, we sing a song about the manger and the cows. Were, uh, they don't say anything about cows. It just said they laid them in, in a manger. Well, where'd you get the cows? Where'd you get the camels? Where'd you get, where'd you get it all? It's a cute little song. It's a lion song. But we learn about an ear. And then the service name was Malchus. 
Um, God, there's so much in your word that I want to know. Did I really need to know about this right ear in this guy? Don't you think Peter's going to, you know, in glory, no time at all. He's in eternity, walking around, he leans over the Bible. You know, the Bible's going to be there forever. And he's flipping through the pages. Why is that name going to be there, Lord? you got to remind me of that guy in his ear forever. Then said Jesus unto Peter, put up thy sword into the sheath. Put, a, put your arms away. The cup which my father has given me, shall I not drink it? Now he's protecting the soldiers. <laughs> Wouldn't you think that this military dictator, Jesus Christ, with his 12 men, one a traitor, would go and force it, let's go kill them all. That's what happens down in South America. They get a group of people, one guy gets, a, gets an army, and they go kill everybody. Now he's in charge, and the next army comes up and kills him. Jesus said, hey, leave those men alone. And Peter's probably thinking, he gets angry. He's cussing when he's at the fire. These men came to get my Jesus, my Christ, and he had the nerve to tell me and put my sword away? Put up thy sword into the sheath, the cup which my father has given me, shall I not drink it? Luke twenty-two fifty-one. Then the band and the captain and officers of the Jews took the band. I like that one. The band. Oh, there's any musical instruments in that band. You know there would have been a celebration. We got them. Again, you ever see the... the, the these things down in the Central and South America, when they captured the, the guy who's in charge, they're, they're happy. They're shooting their guns up in the air and everything. We've got them. The band and the captain and officers of the Jews took Jesus. Um, Jesus gave himself up. You didn't take him worth nothing. He just said, I am he. Boom, you fall flat on the floor. You didn't take him. He gave himself to you. Get that. When he had the opportunity to kill all these men and call the, the legions of angels, he said, okay, here I am. Take me now. So he goes willingly. The officers of Jews took Jesus and bound him like Samson. Jesus must have had the strength just as much as Samson because the same thing happened. Bind him. And Samson twice, man, he came up with all strength and beat butt. Think about the butt that Jesus could beat and cast you into hell. And led him, they didn't lead him away, he walked. Come on. My Savior willingly went to that cross. My Savior willingly walked to this courthouse. He didn't cry for no lawyers. He didn't cry for no injustice. He didn't have people breaking storefront windows and everything like that. He didn't say fall to the police. You know what you've done when you've taken the Bible away from one race of people? You turn them into devils and wicked men. That ain't going to go too well, but it's the truth. What happened to the colored man used to sing gospel songs for Jesus? Now look at the crap music they're playing. That guy listening at work. They took Jesus and bound him and led him to Ananias first. Luke 3 2. For he was father in law to Caiaphas, which was the high priest that same year. Now, Caiaphas was he which gave counsel, John 11 49, to the Jews that it was expedient that one man should die for the people. Here's religion. Yep, exactly. So the man that said somebody has to die for the nation of Israel is now going to put that man to death. You know he did not have no idea what he said. And Nicodemus was there that night. This man 
prophesied out of the scriptures not knowing the scriptures. Yes, a man can quote scripture and have no knowledge of God. This man is going to do something biblically. Biblically. Christ died according to the scriptures. He's going to do it. And he has no idea what he's doing. Don't you think Judas would have like, priest? Yeah, I'll give you Jesus. Oh, hey, yeah, great. 30 pieces. Wait a minute. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Stop the boat here. Let's go to the scroll room. Somewhere I've read about this. I read about somebody 30 pieces of silver here. There's something wrong here. And yet it never came to Judas' mind that he's fulfilling scriptures. Did it? And yet it never came to keep his, his how you want to say it ain't worth it. Your name ends up in hell. Unknown in name today. And never realized this guy, everything that Jesus has done, he's fulfilling the prophecies of the Messiah. And he doesn't even know what he's doing. He doesn't care. And long before I run, we're going to see that Jesus is completely innocent. And he don't care. He's going to take that money that Judas throws down and, and pronounces Jesus innocent. Who cares? Take that money and go, go buy a cemetery because it's the price of blood. It came from your hands. This guy is so cold, he just does death. Who cares? Wait a minute, is he supposed to be teaching thou shalt not kill? Now Capus was he which gave counsel to the Jews that it was expedient that one man, one man should die for the people. That's religion. And Simon Peter followed Jesus. And so did another disciple. That disciple was known unto the high priest. That's John. John and the high priest knew each other for some reason. Somehow. And went in with Jesus into the into the palace of the high priest. Peter stopped at the porch. It looks like John went all the way in. He said, "Well, weren't they all supposed to forsake him?" Yeah, in that that riot, that military coup. But now things are settled down. They got their one man. That's what they wanted. They don't realize in the book of Acts how powerful these men that they let go. They should have taken John and Peter right now and dealt with them. Because John and Peter are going to go through the book of Acts like wildfire. John and Peter will show up before this council again. I guarantee it in the book of Acts. And don't you think those men are going to look upon them and say, Oh man, then we, we should get rid of you that night. You ever, had, you ever had that opportunity and, you know, it just comes right back in your face? Oh, man, I wish I'd done that then. Think of that with, with these bugs that run down here in Florida, man. I wish I killed you in the living room and I'd get out of my bed. But Peter, Simon Peter followed Jesus. But Peter stood at the door without. He did not enter. Peter followed Jesus. But he stood at the door. He didn't follow Jesus all the way. John ends up at the cross with Jesus and Mary. You know how lovely John's Gospels is compared to the three? And in the revelation that, that Jesus gives to John, have you ever read 1st, 2nd, 3rd John? 2nd John is one of the smallest books in the Bible, but man, that hits doctrine. John lays out to you, you're not invite those people in your house. John is interesting reading. Then went out that other disciple, which was known unto the high priest, and spake unto her that kept the door, and brought in Peter. So John goes up, he speaks to the, the he speaks to her about Peter. And he gets to go in a little closer. Now anyone could be a Peter. I have denied the Lord since I've been saved many a time, more than three. When I've been put on the spot, no, I don't know. I don't know. 
So I'm not going to pick on Peter. I've done the same thing. I thank God, God's mercy and great. He says, do you love me? Yeah, I love you, Lord. If you really, really love me? Yeah, Lord, I love you. Knock it off and start proclaiming my word, will you? Yeah, Lord, I'm sorry. We do it. We all do it. You don't say you do it. You're a liar. You need to confess to being a liar. Then saith the damsel that kept the door unto Peter. Now, this would be the one that John talked to. What did John tell her? I always wondered. Did John have part of it? Art not thou one of this man's disciples? <laughs> um, I always just figured John was like, I'll get you back. You remember Peter and John were fishermen before they knew Jesus? I don't know. I don't know. A little envy here. I don't know if they have a problem, but I've dealt with people my entire life. And it's. Let that man in there. Let that disciple of Jesus in here. So he walks through the door. Thou art one of his disciples. And he said, I am not. Well, plus, John was there when he, Jesus said to Peter that he yep. said, I am. So John's part of the revelation. So I am not. The servants and officers stood there who had made a fire of coals. It must have been cold. It was cold. Oh, see, I knew it. And they warmed themselves. And Peter stood with him and warmed himself. Man, he followed Jesus. He stood at the door, and now he's warming himself with the enemy. These women, wait, wait a minute. The servants and officers stood there. Let's go to verse three. And Judas, having received a band of men and off. Peter is warming himself with the same people that grabbed his Savior. You know how dangerous to hang out with the lost people? Jesus, will, in one of the Gospels, he says, go tell my disciples and Peter. Because what Peter's doing right here, he lost. This is losing ground. He's with the wrong company. The wrong place and the wrong warmth. I thought he was going to stand by Jesus. Seems like Jesus is standing all alone now. The high priest then asked Jesus of his disciples and his doctrine. They're setting up questions now. See, they want the disciples. He wants names. Idiot. You have two of them right there in your palace. Jesus answered him, I spank openly to the world. I ever taught in the synagogue, in the temple, with the Jews always resort, and in secret have I said nothing. Ooh, Jesus didn't belong to a secret society. Why askest thou me? Ask them which heard me what I have said. And unto them, behold, they know what I said. Ooh. They know the word of God. They heard me. And when he had thus spoken, one of the officers which stood by struck Jesus with the palm of his hand, saying, Answers thou the high priest so? Acts 23, 1 through 5. And Jesus, him, and Paul, you white as sepulchre. And Paul lost his temper. See, we're all men. Jesus, boom. And Jesus said, if I have spoken evil, bear witness of the evil. But if well, in other words, if I didn't speak evil, why smile thou me? What'd you do that for? If I did something wrong, okay, I deserved it. But you see, the high priest, he's the holy baloney. It'd be like me go if the Pope came to America and walked up to the Pope's face and said, you're going to hell without the blood of Jesus Christ. And I don't mean drinking it. You cannibal. Somebody would come up and try to take me away and get him away from the holy f idiot. I thought I was going to say father, didn't you? No, that's God's title. You can't talk to our priest like that. You can't talk to our pastor like that. You can't talk. Yeah, 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 yeah. See, it's all about men worship. Jesus knows there's officers all around. When was the last time in the Gospel of John you heard officers? Now they're all around. 
Jesus answered him, If I have spoken evil, bear witness of the evil, but if well, why smilest thou me? Now Annas had sent him bound unto Caiaphas, the high priest. So, we've got a problem here. We've actually got three trials of Jesus. He stands before Ananus, then he stands before Caiaphas, then he stands before Pilate. And Jesus has not slept. And if you remember, this is after dinner. The disciples in the garden while he was praying fell asleep three times. He's bound. Simon Peter stood and warmed himself. They said therefore unto him, Art not thou also one of his disciples? And he denied it and said, I am not. That's twice. We don't really know how we would react, would we? When put on the spot. I mean... If your employer didn't want to have anything to do with your religion, you could get in trouble. And your boss came up to you saying, are you a Christian? What would you do? Did you put this gospel track in the bathroom? What are you going to do, lie? They know it's you. One of the servants of the high priest, being his kinsman, whose ear Peter cut off twice. And you know how many times it's mentioned that, Pete, that someone took a sword and chopped this guy's ear off in the Bible? And how many times is it recorded that Jesus was born? There's more information about a man's ear than the birth of Jesus. And what was Jesus' famous expression all through his ministry? He that has an ear to hear. You can just picture him picking up that ear like... <laughs> And then another gospel says he put it back on. You got to wonder, did he grow a new ear or did he pick up the ear, clean it off with his robe and put it back? All about a man's ear. You know why you know this is a Bible? What book would you pick up and would write about a war story and a man who lost his big toe or something? You see, that's foolish. Wasn't there a king in the Old Testament that fought a bunch of men and they cut off their toes? <laughs> I think it was their right toe, their big toes. Wasn't there a, a battle or a bunch of men that went to go visit another king and they shaved off half their beards and, and their, cut off their clothes and their bullocks? Buttocks? Not bullocks. Buttocks? We've learned so much about this ear. And yet we don't get the full picture of Jesus being tortured. Isn't that remarkable? We are not told one name of anybody of the soldiers that whipped Jesus. And yet we can say, who's the man who had his ear chopped off for the $200 question on our TV show? Malchus. Yay! That's interesting. And one of the servants of the high priest, being his kinsman, whose ear Peter called, said, did not I see thee in the garden with him? <laughs> Didn't you cut my family members' ear off? Didn't I see you? Now remember, it was dark too. So it could be, maybe I think I saw you there. Peter then denied and immediately the cock crew. 6 a.m. And we're not done yet. And Jesus is going to get no sleep. They led, they, then led, uh, then led they Jesus from Caiaphas unto the hall of judgment, and it was early. Yeah, the the, the cockatrice crew, and they themselves went not into the judgment hall, lest they should be defiled. You hypocrites, you. We don't want to defile ourselves. You've taken a man that's innocent and now beaten him, accused him of nothing, and you're going to bring him to Pilate because you are envious of the crowds. And it was early, and they themselves went not to the judgment hall, lest they should be defiled. But that day might eat the Passover 
Um, let's put it like this. Mary had a little lamb. Little lamb. That Passover lamb, you just struck it. That Passover lamb, you got his hands tied. That Passover lamb is standing right in front of you. And you're going to be a Catholic and you're going to go eat the Passover lamb. You're eating the wrong lamb. Because Jesus already told you in John chapter 6, eat of my, me the bread of life. You see how it's all spiritual? We're going to go have a physical meal with the lamb, the Passover lamb. We're going to pass the physical lamb. I mean, we're going to pass the spiritual lamb for the physical lamb. We're going to have a land that we can have forks and spoons and knives if that's what they had been there. Whereas we pass the spiritual land, which we can get eternal life. John is back to the physical and the spiritual again. Pilate then went out. They went out. Pilate then went out unto them. See, they're not in the judgment hall. They're outside the judgment hall. It's Jesus and Pilate. Those guys didn't even have enough nerve to come into the court. Why are you guys going? It's our religious holiday. No, you're a bunch of wimps. Step in that judgment hall and tell Pilate that you accuse him of. Is that a cricket out here? <laughs> see, they knew Pilate was smart enough to see through them. And if we step into that judgment hall, he's going to find us wrong and find him right. And he's going to let him go. We don't want that. We've got him. That's the reason. <clears throat> Pilate went out unto them and said, what accusation? All right. What accusation bring ye against this man? Okay, what are the charges? They answered and said unto him, if he were not a malefactor, a criminal, we would not have delivered him up unto thee. There were no charges rendered. Well, if he wasn't a criminal, we wouldn't brought him to him, would we? Charges. That's not what the question was. That was not the question. Okay, he's a criminal. What's the crime? They answered him, if he were not a malefactor. Well, he's not. We would have not delivered him up unto thee. Then said Pilate unto them, Take ye him, and judge him according to your law, Moses. Well, that's the problem. What law did Jesus break of Moses' law? None of it. So Pilate says, here, go judge him by your law, but you're going to find him what? Innocent. So Pilate does declare Jesus innocent without fault, but he does it one other time to the priest without even knowing it. Here, hand him over to the law of Moses and you're going to find out there's no need to bring him to me. Now, if that's not a kick in the butt, what is? This is the, the Gentile soldier of Babylon walked up to Jeremiah and said, Your God did this to you because you guys are sinners. The Jews therefore said unto him, It is not lawful for us to put any man to death. And that's kind of true, but not true. Under the Roman government law, Rome was in charge. But if it was not lawful for them to put him to death, you remember a few times they picked up stones and were going to stone? Well, I thought it was illegal. Liars. That the saying of Jesus might be fulfilled, which he spake, signifying what death he should die. Now see, verse 32 tells you, they've already tried to stone him. It didn't work. Jesus has to die the Roman way. Be lifted up on the cross. He can't die by stoning because the Bible says not a bone of him would be broken. Again, the key of bishop should be saying, there's something wrong with this picture here. Why can't we kill him? 
Then Pilate entered into the judgment hall again. So they're, they're still outside. And called Jesus and said unto him, Art thou the king of the Jews? And Pilate, okay. <clears throat> Between 32 and 33 fit Luke 23, 6 to 12. All right, now it's a king issue. Who are you? What is your status? Why are your people bringing you, bringing you to me? Jesus answered him, Sayest thou this of thyself, or did others tell, you, tell, it, tell it thee of me? Ooh, that was hard to say. And the motive, what's, what's the whole thing for this question, Pilate? Because remember, a few days ago, remember what they were shouting when he was coming to Jerusalem? Then he ticked them off by walking in that temple and, and, and buying cassette tapes and what would I do, bracelets and mustard seed necklaces and a hat, you know. No? He didn't do that? Thought he would visit. Sorry. Pilate answered, Am I a Jew? Kind of says, Who? brought the thing that he was a king thine own nation uh oh Jesus is Jewish oh shoot Pilate you said a mouthful Pilate said that of thy own nation Jews so Pilate said Jesus is not white and Jesus is not chocolate Jesus is brown thy own nation And the chief priest. Ooh. Pilate has separated the chief priest from the nation. The sheep from the goats. <laughs> you want to study? Study Pilate in all four of these Gospels. You got to wonder. I mean, I know I, I've read things about his life and all that. For the fear of the people, I don't Pilate was convinced who Jesus was. Can I? Can I just say that? When he nails that accusation on the cross, I have written what I've written. You, you, you want to seal? You want to seal that too? You make it as sure as you can. But brother, I'm telling you right now, he ain't gonna. You ain't gonna keep it. But I don't know, Pilate. I did not live with him. I have no idea. But what is written about him? I think he was convinced. Thine own nation, the chief priests, have delivered thee unto me. What hast thou done? Now let's go back to twenty nine. Pilate then went out unto them and said, what's the accusation? Now he turns to Jesus. What's your crime? You are standing in my judgment seat. And I've had people come up. He stole money from my mother. He robbed me of my cows. He stole from the, the First National Rome Bank. He killed my brother. Blah, 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 blah. And now he's got this guy standing before him. And the accusation and the charges, blank. This is a weird case for Pilate this afternoon, this morning. Jesus answered, my kingdom is not of this world. We're going back to the kingdom. If my kingdom were of this world, then would my servants fight? Joel 2, second advent, Peter. Peter, you cut off his ear a little too early. I hate to see Peter coming back on the second advent, man. He, <laughs> sword going. That's the time. This is not the time to fight. You realize if we kill as Christians, if we kill people today, if they're unsaved, we send them off into hell. Well, am I supposed to protect my family? That's a that's a thin line. Yeah, we're supposed to protect our family. Jesus said if they if they in, in one town flee to another. But I don't know. I, where's the line drawn if I send a man, I preach on the streets about salvation, Jesus Christ, and I send a man off into hell. If my kingdom were of this world, and it's not, then would my servants fight that I should not be delivered to the Jews. But now is my kingdom not from hence. Revelation 11, 15. 
Jesus just told Pilate, those Jews are in trouble. They're not going to believe him now. They're not going to believe him during the death, burial, and resurrection. They're not going to believe him. I mean, talk about as a nation, as a corporate. They're not going to believe him after the ascension, the book of Acts, as a corporate. The kingdom's going to go away for a little while. It's been about 2,000 years. But oh, when Jesus comes back, then we'll be fighting. Pilate therefore said unto him, Art thou a king then? Rebellion against Caesar, the Roman government? Is that what you're here for? Conspiracy? Is that your charge? Is that your charge? Jesus answered, Thou sayest that I am a king. To this end was I born. To stand here right in front of you. To be tried right in front of you. And for you to tell me I need I need to be, or I don't know how to say it, but I need to be crucified. This is why I was born. And for this cause came I into the world to die on that cross. Jesus just told Pilate, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. How's that? For this cause I came into the world, that I should bear witness unto the truth. Everyone that is of the truth hears my voice. I wonder if Pilate was listening. Pilate said unto him, What is true? And when he said this, he went out again under the... No, he didn't listen. He didn't listen. What is true? And he walks out. Now that could be the damnation right there, Pilate. But that guy was convinced. Let me ask you a question. When it comes to Pilate, how many born-again Bible-believing Christians that are saved, you know they're saved beyond a shadow of doubt, ever heard the voice of Jesus? And yet here is Pilate, an unsaved Roman, listening to God's voice. What was Jesus' voice like? You realize all these people that heard God's voice in, through Jesus Christ did not care? Did you get that? How many people read the Bible or have the Bible read to them or scripture told to them and it's the word of God and they just don't care? Including Christians. I can't wait to, I don't know if I die or the rapture, if I were to die, I'd be absent with the, from the body present with the Lord. I don't know what the, the Lord's going to say to me the first thing, but can you just imagine what that voice is going to be like? Can you picture the holy Jesus Christ without sin in glory speaking to us when, when he welcomes us? As you hear those cherubim shouting, holy, what's that sound like? And here is God standing before a man saying, I'm the way, I am the truth, and I'm the life. And the guy gets up and walks away. And I see that happen every Saturday morning when I preach on the streets to people. There are people I know who go out knocking on doors, and they will just close the door just like Pilate will. And you got to sit there and wonder and say, what on earth are they doing? Now, let me ask you something, Christian. Let's say here you are in this room. Let's forget it's a judgment room or hall. Here's this hall. Here's you and Jesus. Would you really want to walk out on Jesus? Wouldn't you like to say, Jesus, here's a chair, here's a table. Let's, pull, let's start talking. And yet there are Christians who will be in the presence of Jesus in through the word and say, all right, fishing's more important. The career's more important. And go out 
And when he had said this, he went out again unto the Jews, the enemy of God. He went out to the worldly crew, as many Christians do. And says unto him, I find no I find in him no fault. This is number one, not guilty. He didn't have to go to the Jew. He could have just stayed with Jesus and say, what can you and I do right now? Well, Pilate, let me tell you something. Yes, sir. I've got to go to that cross. Really? Yes. I've got to die on that cross. You're going to bury me in a tomb. You need to put a seal on that tomb. Okay? Write, write, write this down. And on the third day, I'm going to rise out of that tomb. Had Pilate understood and, and took knowledge of Jesus Christ, he just walks out and says, no, I, find no, I don't want him. And you find in other Gospels that he doesn't want him. He passes them off to Herod. He passes them off, gets them back. But ye have a custom. i got to move my marker here. That I should re release unto you one at the Passover. Gee, where did he get when we put it, when the president is going to enter office, he's got to pardon some criminals? Where did that come from? <clears throat> John chapter 18. And this is interesting because where do you find this in the law? Where does God say in the law that you take a person who is a criminal by act and release him? Only place I ever saw something like that was someone innocent in the, the cities of refuge. And that was the death of the high priest. Then he could go. But he was innocent. Ye have a custom. So here is... The, all right, let's see what Paul said in verse 38. What is truth? But you have a custom. You see the difference between God and religion? Almost like the, the religionists in Israel were getting arrested. And at the Passover, you let our people go. That I should release unto you one of the Passover. Will ye therefore that I release unto you the king? <coughs> no, it's the K. I am beyond a shadow of a doubt. Pilate knew who he was talking about. Knew who was before him. I don't know if he believed or not. Probably not. But the king, capital K. Do you realize what could have happened to Pilate if Caesar heard him say that? Pilate would be. Yeah, That's why he gives in because they threaten yeah. to let Caesar know. Yes. <laughs> Pilate would be out there as the fourth one on the cross. Even more tortured. You ever read what Barabbas was? He wasn't just a robber here, he was an insurrection and. Unto you, the king of the Jews. All right, Jews. Not Roman. But the king of the Jews. Then cried they all again, saying, Not this man. Uh -uh. Wasn't there a place that said that uh, Caiaphas said that one man should die for the people? Verse 14. This man, but Barabbas. Now Barabbas was a robber. He's guilty. There's other, law, other laws he broke, but he's guilty. But Jesus, he Pilate comes out, I find no fault in him. You want me to let somebody go? Okay, who? The guilty one. That did not work in Pilate's favor. Pilate was for sure going to think, oh, okay, Jesus is innocent, let him go. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Did I just let go a guilty party? And I still got the innocent guy? Now, Paul said, I have planted, Paul's water, God gave the increase. Three times, four times, Pilate says, I find no fault with him. God the Father was working on Pilate that afternoon with his son. I guaranteed that part. His wife comes in, had no deal with that man. I had many a dream about him. That's how the prophet spoke. 
If Pilate did, I, I don't know. If Pilate died without Jesus Christ, what that man he suffered. But interesting study. You you break down Pilate. He's an interesting man. <laughs>